quite often uh, there are these one-liners that are floating around in, in the bodybuilding space, things that you hear through the grapevine, things that make it to you over and over in this game of, of telephone that um, they're not very, how do I say, they don't take a wide array of situations into consideration. You know, it, it's, uh, yeah, you know, so context like is, is, is important. However, you know, I'd say when it comes to this one, first of all, the anterior delt, because of just the shape of the muscle, where it's located, um, in those small instances where I have seen it underdeveloped, and of course this is within the context of everything else around it being pretty well developed, they don't look all that bad. They don't. Um, but again, that is that is that is very rare that you see a front delt that is underdeveloped. Uh, and the few times I have seen it again, it's it's usually because of this like very unique. Um, sort of muscle shape and and the way it attaches uh, rare that in fact that I, I legit and I look at physiques all the time whether it's my athletes uh, people at the gym I train at or just browsing through the social medias hardly ever do I see someone who is like screwed over when it comes to shape here the way say a lot of people including myself are when it comes to say calves so um, even when it's underdeveloped, it doesn't look terrible, but hardly ever is it underdeveloped. And that's just because it's in the line of fire of uh, a lot of other pressing movements. And here's a good example for you is like, you take a power lifter who, you know, has been lifting long enough where they have a, a, a good amount of, of muscle mass. You hardly ever, see, and most of their focus is going to be, and quite often, all of their focus. They don't do any incline work. They don't do any overhead pressing. Um, quite often, their anterior delts are developed enough. So I don't think you need to have an overhead press. Uh, I think in, in many cases for most folks, especially once they get to the point where you know, you're in that mid to high level intermediate and you are just looking for places uh, to uh, maybe uh, put in some extra work that some more stubborn body parts might need. Uh, or, you know what, as a matter of fact, it's just simply a slot of a unit of volume that, hey, maybe if you pull that away, um, you it can potentially help recovery when it comes to, to everything else. So, um, so the overhead press, I don't think you need it. However, they sh they, there should be a component of, I just enjoy this. So if you do enjoy overhead pressing, by all means, put it in there. Like currently I am overhead pressing and I'd say overhead pressing is something that throughout my training career, more often than not has not been in my program, but I have it in there now because honestly, I enjoy it at the moment. With that out the way, yes, uh, what makes the deltoid muscle group look really impressive, and by the way, before I get rolling with that, I, I think it's odd that especially young men when they start training, like they focus maybe too much on the chest, when like, in reality it's like, what would you rather be, have delts and no chest or, or chest and no delts? Like which one looks more impressive, right? I'd say like, you know, like round delts uh, with an underdeveloped chest is just a look that looks more pleasing to the eye. So that's how important, that's how important the medial delt is when it comes to giving you that aesthetic look, right? Because it's going to make this puff out, it's going to make your waist seem um, smaller, um, and it it is what legitimately I think when it when we're scanning a physique usually steals a show. It's like probably one of the first things that we do notice is an awesome pair of delts, and the majority of that is going to come from the medial delt. So <laughs> the thing about the medial delt is that legit bodybuilders can go like their whole career not knowing how to train their medial delts in a efficient 
safe manner. Um, and it's something that's really, really worth pursuing, like learning to be competent when it comes to movements to train that head of the deltoid, because it, again, it does give it that, uh, it does give physiques that boom, look, I mean, shoot, when you look back here, it's like you, you in, let's just say you're looking at just the muscles on, on our friend back there, uh, like we can't help but kind of come out here. Right. So even with the guy that's turning away, it's like it's like how wide this is really changes what a physique looks like. Right. It really changes the appearance of the whole thing. So anterior delt presses, overhead presses. I don't think you need uh, put them in there if you like them. Right. Kind of like, say, you know, other movements that are very optional for like bodybuilders, like, say, deadlifts. Um, uh, squats in some cases even um but uh but what definitely i think is just a movement that everyone should have in there is a well executed lateral raise with that said i want to give you guys some pointers while i have you here so a lateral raise should be in the mid scapular plane and when you are in the mid scapular plane it doesn't feel like a raise. It literally feels like a flick because there's so much space there in which to move. So a good lateral raise actually feels like a flip, uh, a flick, uh, it's almost reminiscent of like a jab in boxing. So this can be done with dumbbells, um, cables, if you have one of those machines that places the load on your humerus, I think, generally speaking, those tend to put you in the mid-scapular plane. Those are, it's a great way to just really groove that pattern, to just gain that awareness in regards to where your humerus should be relative to your torso, because it's not out to the side. The mid-scapular plane is, again, kind of in front of you. Um, Doing that will make it so that, hey, you only know one way uh, to raise your arms up. So, yes, it is true. Uh, overhead press, very, very optional. Uh, you want big delts, lateral raises is where it's at. However, there should always be a component of I just really um, ha I have this lift in there because I thoroughly enjoy it. And this is something that regardless, I think of, regardless of what level you're at and, and what's the purpose of, of you competing, whether it's getting on stage for the first time or, or shoot, you know, you're, you're, you're this close to getting that pro card, uh, there should always be a component of your training or, or you should be okay with having a few set movements in your training program. Your training program should be inclusive. You should have a few movements there that are maybe just there because you enjoy them. So yeah, not needed, not essential for big shoulders. I, usually the rest of our pressing will take care of it. Uh, but if you enjoy it, by all means, have it in there. Just remember mastering the lateral raise is, I guess, I don't speak in absolutes. I don't like to, but it's very close to one when it comes to building an aesthetic physique.